All right. So one of the things I said I would do today, equivalent. So we're going to start with a circuit. I've got a battery here, and I've got. I'm going to draw it this way. And that's actually what's tricky about some of these problems when you're calculating equivalent resistance is you might get a circuit that looks like this. And you have to figure out what's in series and what's in parallel. So this is the circuit that I'm going to start with. This is going to be 100 ohms. This is 200 ohms. This is 100 ohms. This is 150 ohms. This is 300 ohms. And this is 100 ohms. And then this is the voltage that I have here. We're going to use this problem for a couple of different things. Remember, we've talked about it a couple of times. We've shown it in some videos. But if I'm in parallel, my equivalent resistance is going to follow this formula. And if I'm in series, my equivalent resistance is going to follow this one. So we're going to look at this circuit and try to figure out what's in parallel and what's in series. So let's go ahead and move through this. So if I have current that's flowing through, it's going to go through here, and then it can split off, right? We can split off. So this part here is going to be in parallel, which means that this part here is going to be in parallel. So let's calculate those two parallel ones first. So we're going to do this as number one, and this one is number two. Number one, the one over REQ is going to equal over 200 plus one over 100. I'm going to use a little bit of math trickery to play with fractions again. So I get one plus two over 200. I'm going to use my common denominator here. I'm going to get that. So this is going to give me 3 over 200, which means my REQ is going to be 200 divided by 3. And that ends up being about 67 ohms. So now we're going to do number 2. I get 1 REQ is equal to 1 over 300 plus 1 over 100. That's going to give me 1 plus 3 divided by 300. It's going to give me 4 divided by 300. REQ is going to equal 300 divided by 4. And that equals 75 ohms. So now what we can do is redraw our circuit. So we're going to redraw our circuit so that we can see it a little clearer. So there's my new circuit. And now this is going to act like 100 ohms. This is going to act like 67 ohms. This is going to be 150 ohms. And this is going to be 75 ohms. And basically, all we've done is taken 
one and now have written out its equivalent here. We've taken this one and written out its equivalent. And now we're going to use our series equation. So that R E Q is going to equal 75 plus 150 plus 67 plus 100. And that's going to end up equaling 392 ohms. Well, now let's find out, you know, we might want to find out a few things. One, we might want to find what the current is. So we might have a question about what the current is in our system. All right, if this voltage is 100 volts, we can now find out the current because V is equal to IR equivalent. Current is going to be my voltage divided by my R equivalent. So I'm going to take my 100 divided by 392, and that's going to equal 0.255 amps. Then we might want to know what the current is across any one of these resistors. We might want to know what those are. So let's look at this one. So let's look at our system that has the 300 and the 100 here. And if we did this, and we're going to look at the voltage across those currents there, this is my 300 and this is my 100. Well, whatever voltage across here has to equal the voltage across there. And we're going to go back to V is equal to IR. And now we know the equivalent REQ for this one, because that's how we derived it before. And that's our 75 ohms. So now if I'm looking at my voltage, it's going to be my 0 0.255 amps times my REQ of 75. And that means the voltage across that 300 resistor is going to be 19 volts. So we can utilize a great deal of information to solve for a number of problems. Okay, let's do, so let's do a different problem. I'm gonna 